The Korean American hero Cindy Moon has only been around since 2014 and she has already garnered quite the fan base and popularity. Enough so to warrant her own solo series, starring roles in video games as well as being primed for live action with Tiffany Espenson, starting with Spider-Man Homecoming, along with Sony's plans for a Silk movie and a starring role in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2. So who is she? Let's talk about her. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether you've been with me for a while or it's your first time here. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe and share it so you and your friends don't miss the content that I upload just like this every few days. Let's jump into the story. In Marvel Comics, there is a phenomenon called the sliding time scale, which means that time moves differently in the Marvel Universe than it does in our world. Sometimes time periods and period specific references change as well. As time moves forward through various stories in Marvel comics, so too do those references. For example, World War II might become the Vietnam War and later the war in Afghanistan, but the story about the character remains the same. This is why when Cindy Moon slicked onto the scene in 2014 with Dan Slott and Umberto Ramos' Amazing Spider-Man, it references 13 years ago, meaning at that time 2001 as the time when Peter Parker was bit by a spider in a lab and not 1962 when Amazing Fantasy 15 was first released. But her story goes back further as we see detailed in the first issue of the Silk Solo series. There we learn that a young Cindy Moon loved playing hockey. Her parents wanted her to focus on her studies but she wanted to play sports and date her boyfriend named Hector. Sydney's mom found out about a Hector and sent her on a school field trip to separate them, I guess, which happened to be sponsored by a company called General Tektronics. So then we jump to Dan Slott's 2014 Spider-Man book and we see the story of Peter Parker in a lab at a science exhibit, a story we're all very familiar with, but we know it's now sponsored by General Tektronics when he's bit by a radioactive spider. That's the story that everyone knows. What you may not know is that after the spider bit young Peter Parker, he slapped his hand and knocked that arachnid right to the floor. The spider wasn't done. The same spider ran across the floor and bit a young girl on a school field trip right on her ankle. And it wouldn't be until issue 4 of the series that we learned that the young girl was on that General Tectonics field trip and her name was Cindy Moon. This guy named Drake Shannon, who calls himself the Orb, had an eye that was ripped out of the face of a cosmic being named Uatu the Watcher after Uatu was killed in a Marvel event called Original Sin. When Drake held up the eye, it imbued Parker and the others right around him with knowledge and secrets, and for Peter, this was how he learned that Cindy was bitten immediately after he was. Peter then learned that she had no control over her powers at first, so in an effort to help her, Mr. and Mrs. Moon, her parents, reached out to a guy named Ezekiel. And Ezekiel had actually been studying spider powers for years and really spider powers gained from animals, a more mystical approach to it. But his research was more focused on the mystical versus a scientific perspective. It had to do with key people in this mystical web of life called totems. And this guy named Morlin who was hunting the totems and hunting Spider-Man. Ezekiel convinced Cindy and her parents that he had to keep her in the lab locked up until she got her powers under control and to keep her a possible totem, a key to that spider web of life, safe from the totem hunting villain Morlin. And she was locked in the bunker for an entire decade. During an event called Spider Island, Madam Web told Spider-Man about the girl. Madam Web is a psychic and a clairvoyant and she can detect powers in others and she said Sydney was out there but Sydney was locked up at the time so Peter had no way of really confirming Madam Web's info until the orb presented the eye and that big revelation came to him. So Spider-Man then went to Ezekiel's abandoned laboratory and found Sydney still locked in a prison cell, terrified that Morlin would get her. In a rage, as Spider-Man unlocked her cell, Cindy attacked Spider-Man. Her speed and abilities already at and actually surpassing Spider-Man. Spider-Man had to tell Cindy that Morlin was dead for her to calm down. Cindy was delighted at this news and, and relieved and ready to start springing around the city, free as a bird, but Spider-Man reminded her that she'd need a mask for her identity. So Cindy made herself a makeshift costume out of her webbing and unlike Spider-Man, Cindy's webbing comes right out of her fingertips. So she shot it out, webbed herself up, and that's when she said when she's webbed up, call her silk. Her webbing is organic. 
It's not mechanical, meaning it comes out of her body and not out of cartridges, as sometimes Peters is depicted as doing. So Sydney, disguised as Silk now, swung to her parents' home, but she found out that someone else was living there. Cindy's family had moved on. She'd been trapped for 10 years, yet she had no idea where they went to, and so she was alone. Spidey commented about Morlin and how he'd come back to life a couple times, and so Cindy thought that he might be alive, and based on this revelation, she got so mad and shot some webbing at Spider-Man, and that's when he learned that her webs were barbed like a fish hook. But instead of continuing to fight, he lifted up his face mask partway, and they made out. Yep. So, sorry, MJ. It was these primal urges spurned on by their shared spider sense, something Silk said had to do with the quote-unquote great web that I talked about earlier, a force connecting and binding everything and everyone together in the multiverse. Silk's first run-in with powered villains was in the next few issues, as she and Spidey encountered Black Cat and Electro. She then got a job at a news agency called Fact Channel News as an intern for a reporter named Natalie Long. And Natalie was trying to get news on Silk, much in the same way that J. Jonah Jameson would want news on Spider-Man, although without the blood pressure spike and popping forehead veins. Natalie called Silk's webbing costume tacky, so Cindy quickly whipped up a new costume, her iconic red, black, and gray that we all know her for today. Soon thereafter, they were swinging around town and ran into Jessica Drew's Spider-Woman, Anya Corazon, Spider-Girl, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, Billy Braddock, Spider-Man UK, Mayday Parker, another Spider-Girl, along with Peter Parker, the Spider-Ham, and thus, Spider-Verse began. The strands of that great web I've kept mentioning pulled all these spider people together from different dimensions, and it turns out that Morlin was in fact back, as Silk had feared, and that he and his inheritors were slaughtering all these spider folk from across the multiverse as they continued to hunt those key spider people, the totems, of which Silk is one. All the spider army went to Central Park on Earth-13 and met up with Cosmic Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, Old Man Spider, uh, Bruce Banner, not Hulk Spider-Man, Scarlet Spider, and Ben Riley. This was Cosmic Spider-Man's dimension, Earth-13, a dimension where Spider-Man never lost his cosmic power called the Enigma Force. Spider-Bruce gave 616 Spider-Man a portal device and he chose Spider-Man 2099, Silk, and Spider-Woman for his team who would go around warning other Spider-People about in other dimensions. And as they left through the portal, Spider-Monkey, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Punk, Superior Spider-Man, and Ashley Burton, Spider-Woman actually showed up. The Spider-Army was growing. Spider-Bruce said Silk should have never left her bunker and later commented that she is the source of their problems. She's a totem and she's key to this whole thing. The old man spider turned out to be Ezekiel, but from another dimension, who said Silk was a totem named The Bride, making her, as I said, again, critical to the story. Silk then actually stole Spider-Man's teleporter and used it to draw the hunters away from the spiders, but she was captured and almost sacrificed by the inheritors. However, the spider army showed up and saved her and we got to the end of the Spider-Verse. So they went back to Earth-616 where Silk made the old bunker where she was kept for 10 years into her new secret lair because every hero like, needs a secret lair, right? She ran into Black Cat again along with this villain named Dragon Claw. And in Silk number 4, she dated Johnny Storm of the Fantastic Four, the Human Torch. Then, just as the last days of Earth were coming about as the incursion slammed worlds together and universes drew closer to Secret Wars, Silk found her brother. In their very last moments together before the world ended, she found him infirmed at a hospital. Cindy hugged him tightly and told him that she loves him and she was sorry. After Secret Wars ended, Silk got another solo series, and in this series, she was working undercover with S.H.I.E.L.D., specifically with Mockingbird, but also with Black Cat. Although Spider-Man wasn't happy that she was working with Black Cat because he didn't know about the S.H.I.E.L.D. thing, Silk teamed up with Spider-Man again to go back in time to before they got their spider powers to stop Chromosaurus Rex, but without messing up the timeline so that they'd still get their powers. Kind of this whole Terminator thing. It was called the Spider-Fly Effect a play on the butterfly effect. During an event called Spider Women, there was another Sulk, an evil Cindy Moon from Spider-Gwen's World of Earth-65 that was a leader of a terrorist organization known as Silk. The strategic, intelligent, and logistic 
K. It's cut off so we don't know what the K means, but like they said, it doesn't really matter. The Earth-65 Evil Sydney Moon went to 616 Earth, the main Marvel Earth, as a villain, and, and everyone thought that the Evil Cindy was 616 Cindy. So she was captured by S.H.I.E.L.D., but Black Cat freed this Cindy, and a few issues later, she teamed up with Jessica Drew and Spider-Gwen to take down the Evil Soap. In Silk issue 13, she learned that her parents were actually in the negative zone, home to Annihilus, and as they were looking for a way to find a way to quote-unquote cure their daughter. After this, she took on the moniker of Silkworm for a mission. In Silk 18, she quit her job at the news channel and instead, with the okay of Mockingbird, went to S.H.I.E.L.D. Academy. Later, Jimmy Woo wanted to combine his protectors with the new agents of Atlas, and he actually offered Silk a spot on his new team, the agents of Atlas. There, she teamed up with Luna Snow, Wave, Arrow, Brawn, Swordmaster, White Fox, Crescent, Io, and Shang-Chi to defeat Muspelheim's Cinder and the Fire Goblins as they protected Asia and the Pacific Islands. Silk revealed that she loves K-pop music and she loves Luna. But her tastes, I guess, are eclectic as she also revealed in Spider-Woman that she's a fan of Eminem. So, there was this city full of portals to other cities called Pan, and at the heart of Pan was a massive tower, which was the headquarters of the Big Nguyen Company, run by Mike Nguyen. Well, Mr. Nguyen had a sea serpent imprisoned in his building, and the dragon, the sea serpent, was helping power all the portals for the city, something that Silk, White Fox, Sword, and Brawn found out when confronting Nguyen. Well, it turns out that this sea serpent was a sacred Atlantean dragon, and Namor, king of Atlantis, was completely pissed off. There was a big fight where Nguyen reveals that he hired the enemies of Atlantis, the Serenas, to defeat Pan. All centered around this story. So Silk went to a meeting between Pan, the Serenas, and Atlantis, where she said she would continue to defend Pan. Silk also has showed up in the recent volume of Amazing Spider-Man. She's going to be recruited by Nora Winters, who also recruited Peter Parker to work for Threats and Menace an operation run by J. Jonah Jameson, but actually bankrolled by none other than the Chameleon. She showed up at the end of issue 44 for ASM with the spider Women, and there is supposed to be a new 2020 Silk series with Maureen Gu as the writer, which will see Sarah and Kaya oppose Silk. But it's on pause due to the pandemic that's currently ongoing. When it does come out, and when she does show up in animated and live action movies, we'll be sure to talk about it. But until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. The story of Sydney Moon, aka Silk. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.